Morning folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is, I thought I'd work on one of the pioneering skills that we taught in last weekend's pioneer class here at the Pathfinder School, and that is how to distill or extract birch oil. And birch oil is a very good thing to have on hand in any long-term or short-term scenario. It's a very good insecticide, which means you can use it for a bug repellent externally. It's very good fungicidally, if that's even a word, but it's a very good fungicide. It's a very good astringent, and it is a very good antiseptic. So anything that's on the surface of your skin, it's good for. If you've got an abrasion or a cut, or you've got poison ivy, or you've got ringworm, or some type of a eczema problem on the external areas of your skin, you can use birch oil to take care of those things, or to help medicinally for those things. You can also use birch oil internally, but I will let you research that on your own. I don't claim to give you medical advice here on the Pathfinder channel. But there are lots of internal uses for birch oil as well. It's a very expensive oil to buy. Um, best guess I could see from looking across the internet, you're looking at somewhere between the you know, $12 for two ounces of it to $75, $80 for a pint. So it's pretty expensive to buy, but you can make it very easily. You can make it in the wild. You just need a couple containers to do that with to set up a distilling type device. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. And what we're going to work with is we're going to work with some birch bark here. And this is like a paper birch or a white birch. And we all know already that birch bark is very good as a fire starting implement. And that's because of the betula oils or the volatile oils in the birch bark. It's almost an accelerant, which means it burns hotter and faster. It makes that material burn faster. It makes it burn hotter. That's why it blows that black smoke or gives off that black smoke when it burns is the betula oil. We want to harness that oil without burning this material up so that that oil is not escaping into the air being burned away by the fire or consumed. We want to capture that oil. To do that, we're going to have to distill it. What we're going to do is we're going to take, I have two square tins here that are almost identical in size. You can see one of these is a soap tin that I got while I was in Holland. The other one is a chocolate tin from Trader Joe's. And what I've done is I've taken this chocolate tin and I've stuffed it with birch bark that's been rolled and folded and stuffed down inside the same height. And I just packed it in there about as tight as I could get it. We could put a couple more pieces in here at the top probably. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to punch a hole in this top of this tin, almost like we were making a char tin. We're going to turn that upside down so the hole is at the bottom. Then we're going to take the lid off of our small tin and put this on top of it in a hole. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. We've got a fire going down here right now, prepping up some fire. And this is what we're going to catch our oil in. So the fire will be built around this tin, which will burn it and cause the oil to be distilled out, drip down to the bottom into this lid, and that hole will direct it into the bottom tin here which will be our collection tin, and then we'll try to pour that off into some type of a container for longevity. So stay with me and we'll walk through this a little at a time, guys. So the first thing we're doing is we're just getting ourselves a sustainable fire built so we've got something to work with. And then we're going to dig a hole off to the side of that and build our fire in a little bit of a different spot away from that to do our distilling. And I'll show you how we're going to make that in just a second. Okay, so I've dug another hole here right beside my fire. And that hole just needs to be deep enough that our tin will go inside of it. And we can go ahead and pack that around a little bit. We don't want to get any dirt in our tin. So we'll be careful about that. And that's just a hold it in place really more than anything else and then we'll make sure we don't have any dirt in there now we're going to take this tin that's got the hole in it and it's stuffed with the birch bark and we put a hole right here in the center and we really want that thing to be a little bit concave so that everything drips toward the center we're going to put that right on top of this and then we're going to kind of bury that in a little bit like this just to kind of seal that up just like this about a ground level 
and then we're going to build our fire. We're going to bring our fire materials out here and build our fire back up around our tin. And I'm going to build a good fire up around this tin and just let it continue to burn probably until it burns out for the most part. I got this bottle I found in the woods and it ain't perfect by any means. I cleaned it out as best I can with hot water. But for something that was found in the woods it'll definitely work. I got a piece of wood here I'm working on as a plug for that bottle. I'm going to carve that down a little bit more now. And then I should be pretty much ready when my oil is ready to transfer. I should be pretty much ready with the container to transfer it into. And you can do all of this with materials found in the woods. You just need a couple of cans. That's all you're really going to need. Very much like you would use if you were making char cloth. You're not going to need a whole lot more than that. I'm just going to carve this stopper down a little bit smaller. It doesn't need to be as big as it is. Okay, I've got my bottle ready here for my extracted oils. Just a quick, simple stopper. Carved out of wood. Looks a bit like a morel mushroom, I guess. But uh, we're about burned down and ready to pour the oils off. Hopefully we've got, you know, out of that tin, if I got a quarter of this bottle full of that oil, I would be happy. It takes a lot of birch bark to get tars and oils out of in any amount. It's like anything else that you do when you're extracting something very similar to maple sugar. It takes a whole lot of that maple sap to render down into maple syrup. It's the same thing. It takes an awful lot of birch bark to get these oils, which is why it's so expensive. If I get a quarter of this bottle filled from that entire tin, like I said, I'll be more than happy. Okay, now that our fire is burnt down pretty well, we can kind of take and scrape everything away from our container back into our fire leg or fire pit over here and we want to get down to where that container to the base of that container basically so that we don't get again any dirt in our oil so I'm just taking a stick here and scraping everything away from the base of this container taking my time here to get everything out I've got to get everything out of the front too I've got some on the front side I need to get out of here scrape it around to the side and get rid of it and this is important if you're trying to avoid any contaminants in your oil dirt coal, things like that that you don't want in there. It's important to take this time and get this right so that when you remove your container you're only left with the oil and there's nothing getting inside of it. Okay. Now when we take this container off we should be left with nothing but the oil in the bottom container. You can see it in there. There it is right there. Okay. Now we'll let this container cool because if we didn't burn everything up and this hasn't become charred material and there's nothing left in there really but creosote, then we didn't burn it long enough and we could cook it longer and extract more oil out of it. Or we could reload the tin once it cools down with fresh bark 
and go at it again as long as we keep our fire pit burning. So now what we need to do is we need to get this container out of here and it won't be too hot because the fire was on top of it and it's in the ground. So a pair of multi-tool pliers or something like that would come in real handy for pulling that container out of the ground and using that to drain into our device we're going to store our oil in. All right, I've got my bottle here with my cork and I'm just going to reach down in here with a pair of pliers like I said and ease that tin out and pour that oil into this bottle. Again, like I said, if I got a quarter of that bottle filled, I would be happy. And that's about what I have. Looking down inside there, I've got a little bit more than a quarter of that bottle filled. I'm going to put the cork in that and set that aside. We've probably got a little bit more we could get out of here. There might be just a little bit more we could drain out of there. Not much. We'll wait till our container cools down that we're using to distill with. And we'll look at that as well. Now you can see what this looks like is a black tarry substance. Lots and lots of uses for that to include knife handles that are made out of wood, axe handles that are made out of wood. Very good protectant for those things as well. Bachelor oil is very rot resistant. So there's lots and lots of uses for that commodity in a wilderness situation, long term or short term. Now, looking at what we have left here, let's remember you've got those oils inside this tin. So you're probably going to have a little bit of a time getting that lid off. It's going to be stuck with those oils, almost glued. And you can see what's left in there is just like a creosote inside there. That birch is pretty much rendered down to nothing but charred material. That's very crumbly and burnt. And it's just a dust of creosote. When you've gotten to that point, you know you've gotten all of the essential oils out of that bark. And then you can just clean your tin out, use it for start storing char, or whatever the case may be in there. Got a little piece stuck to it there, a little oil stuck to that. Clean that off of there. And then we can put our lid back on the next time but it's going to be difficult to get that lid off there a little bit every time because you've got that creosote oil built up around the edge of that tin lid so remember that as well like I said we've got a little bit of oil we could get out of there but I'd be more inclined to use that on something right away like an axe handle or something like that I would take my axe and right away you know I would just start wiping that on my axe as a protectant and just wipe that stuff out of there and use it up because that's pretty much tar at the bottom of that not so much oil but more tar where it's gotten really thick but this works really really good as a protectant as well as a stain for your axe handle we'll just wipe all that off there with our thumb and get it on there and we'll just work it into our axe handle and that'll give us a really good protectant it's also kind of sticky so it gives you a real good grip on your handle as well. Just rub it in there. You can see what that looks like on my axe handle. All right, folks, well, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here today for this video on how to extract birch oil from birch bark. Again, you know, really good protectant for any of your wooden handled objects as well as being good medicinally and insecticidal so it's very good for keeping the bugs off you as well now it's going to stain your skin a little bit it's going to stain it brown like that and it's going to stay that color I can fair warn you it's going to stay that way for a while so again it's also a good stain if you're trying to stain some type of tool handle or something as well as protect it at the same time you can rub that oil in there and do that keeping a small bottle of this stuff in your kit is always going to be good for a lot of things I was supposed to 
Leave for Missouri this afternoon for a flintlock hog hunt for Hunt Channel TV. The weather has kind of given us a fit. Looks like we're talking about solid thunderstorms and rain over the next four or five days. So my co-producer, co-owner of Three Seas LLC, is also talking about postponing that hunt, possibly putting it off for a few weeks. If that happens, I'll be around and I will try to get some more videos loaded up to this channel this week if that happens, rain or shine. I also put a video up this morning on Pathfinder TV and set it to free, so you can go watch it for free right now on Pathfinder TV at our Pathfinder TV YouTube channel on working through the variables to make a bow drill fire in the rain, basically a rain shower off and on throughout the day. And we work through the variables to make a bow drill fire in that rain. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business. For everyone affiliated with the Pathfinder School and Self-Reliance Outfitters, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.